The next topic to start with is the spherosome. Spherosome is something which I have already told you in the SCR topic. So spherosomes for the first time were reported and, this, and uh, explained by Perner in 1953. Uh, spherosomes are involved with the main function of storage and synthesis of the fats. They are 0.5 to just 1 micrometer in size. So it's a single membrane structure uh, which carries fat inside them. They are formed from SER. S means smooth, smooth means fat formation. So SER will bring will form vesicles and those vesicles carrying fats are called as spherosomes. Uh, remember spherosomes are one of an example where only half unit membrane is there. Now what is half uh, unit membrane? If you remember plasma membrane and all other membranes carry two layers of phospholipids. In case of spherosome there is only one layer of phospholipid and in that layer phosphate group is towards the cytoplasm and the lipid portion is towards the inside of the spherosome and they are stabilized with the help of oleosins and they are present in huge amount in those in the endosperm cells of those seeds which carry oil inside them. So plant seeds which contain oil inside their endospermic cells they can carry great amount of spherosomes. The next uh, com com uh, component of the cytoplasm is microbodies. Microbodies are very small in size. They are also called as microsomes and they all there are three types of microsomes and they all develop from the ER. The first type is peroxisome, second type is glyoxisome and third type is melanosome. So the basic meaning about microbodies is what? Microbodies were discovered by Rodin's in 1954 and microbodies do not participate in aerobic respiration but they participate in other types of oxidation. Now what is that other type of oxidation? So let's understand the first type that is called as the peroxisome. Peroxisomes are those microbodies which carry peroxidase enzyme. So they synthesize hydrogen peroxide. That's why the name is peroxisome. So they are, they are richly present in plant cells as well as in animal cells. They were discovered and named by De Duve, the same person who discovered the lysosome. And uh, 0 0.5 to 1 micrometer is the 1 micrometer is their size. In 1969, Duve, Christian De Duve discovered that, and uh, their function is to carry two enzymes. The first enzyme is peroxidase, and the second enzyme to function is catalase. Now, uh, extra amino acids, harmful uric acid, extra purines in your diet, supplements, and all. So all these things are dangerous for us. So they undergo oxidation with the help of which enzyme peroxidase enzyme and this is converted into H2O2. Now H2O2 is also toxic or poisonous for us so this H2O2 with the help of catalase enzyme is changed is made into non-toxic form that means water and a nascent oxygen. So this process takes place in detoxification so this process helps a lot in the Digestion of alcohol in the digestion of toxins, toxin uh, also called detoxification and uh, microbody especially the peroxisome also plays an important role in photorespiration. This topic I will be teaching in the photosynthesis chapter of the plant physiology. The second type is glyoxisomes. Glyoxisomes were discovered by Breed and Batch in 1967. They are also of the similar size. So generally microbodies are 1 to 1.5 micrometer in diameter. Otherwise smaller even than the 1 micrometer. They are present in fungi. They are present in the oil containing germinating seeds. And uh, glyoxisomes carry the enzymes required for oxidation of fatty acids. And fatty acids will change into acetyl coenzyme A. Uh, this is something which you will be learning in respiratory chapter, respiration. Melanosomes. Melanosomes are present in the melanocytes. And they carry the melanin pigment, the brown color we have in our skin. So melanocytes carry melanosome. And they are this much small in size and they will pinch out. They move out from the melanocyte and go into the skin cell. Uh, Indian skin also carries melanosome. The next topic to study is the ribosomes. 
So uh, the ribosome, let's break this word. Ribo here stands for ribonucleic acid. Ribonucleic acid means RNA and soma means body. So a body which is rich in RNA, reason it is made up of RNA and protein is called as ribosome and to be more precise in your ninth class you have learned that ribosomes are also called as the protein factories. So the ribosomes for the first time were observed by Claude but they were explained nicely and that they are rich in RNA, this all was explained nicely by Pellet. That's why they are, uh, he called them as ribosome because they are rich in RNA. And to honor him today, we even call them as Pellet particles. They are universal component of every living cell because they are present in prokaryotes. They are even present in the eukaryotes. Uh, remember